Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Peyton Anderson with Next Level Athletes. I'm thrilled to have Thomas Gore on the podcast today. Uh, this past season, that defensive lineman uh, for Georgia State, Thomas racked up 44 total tackles, 24 of them solo, along with 20 assisted tackles, but also had two and a half sacks. Additionally, he earned athletic director's honor role in the spring of 2020, but this past season earned honorable mention for the 2021 All Sun Belt Conference. Uh, Thomas, first of all, thanks so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me, man. Of course. Uh, let's start with your recruitment process coming out of high school. Uh, what did you find most eye-opening about it? Anything you found to be difficult? But on top of this, what ultimately led you to Georgia State? Got you. So the beginning of my recruitment process started going into my senior year. So that junior year of high school, that spring, that's when I received my first two offers. Actually, I think I received them on the same day. And they were Sanford and Navy. So when that once I got a couple offers, that's when more schools started looking at me, reaching out to me. That's when I became like started the whole process. So mm -hmm. it wasn't that hard. It was just the biggest thing was just trying to get out to all the schools, see what they have, and just being in high school, you don't really have that much time to get around to all the schools. So you have to make mm -hmm. a few decisions that might be decisions you don't want to make, but you have to get a few like top five. You know, everybody yeah. makes the top five. And that's the schools you have to at least try to get out to. Mm -hmm. So with me going into my senior year, we had actually had we made it to state championship one, but that also pushed me back on some of my official dates, so I couldn't make it out to some places. So I ended up my two top schools were Wofford and Georgia State. And I think the one thing that really brought me to Georgia State is that Atlanta is some place I always been when I was younger. I have mm -hmm. family here. And I feel like it was a big enough stage for me to be put on and be able to show off my talent. Mm -hmm. Of course. And um, reflecting back on your high school career, you talked about you helped uh, Brentwood Academy in Nashville, Tennessee, to win his fourth straight title uh, in 2018, uh, named first team All-State Division II AAA by the Tennessee Sports Writers Association and much more. Uh, you were also a state champ uh, heavyweight wrestler and uh, threw shot put and disc discus uh, for the track and field team. Uh, what would you say you miss most about high school in general, but also your all-time favorite memory? Mm, okay. I think I miss the most probably be probably just, you know, winning always brings good memories. So it's just being around a winning atmosphere, being in an atmosphere with my friends. It was just, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just all good times. I really never had a bad time mm -hmm. at school really like that because we were just doing so good, so I probably best memory or a couple. Or, it doesn't have to be one, but maybe one in particular. Probably my senior year state championship, because that was for the four peak. In that season, we had lost a couple games. People were thinking like they're not gonna go for the fourth one. Maybe mm -hmm. this is a class that doesn't get it. So beating all the doubters, making to that game, and we have we pretty sure we. Demolish that game. I can't really remember, but just winning that state championship with all my, like with my class, and it felt like our class did it. So that's probably one of my favorite memories. Other than that, it had to be that state championship one for wrestling. Of course. And uh, take me through your first thoughts and expectations when you first arrived on campus, started practicing. Additionally, what led you to redshirt your first season? But also, what did you learn most from that experience going forward? Yes. So, first experiences and Expectations when I first got to campus, it was a uh, summer of 2019, come down, meeting all the other players in your class. So start off working out and just everybody thinks, you feel me, the coaches don't talk to you, tell you, you come in, we want you to play. Mm -hmm. So that's always the big expectation in your head. But when you really get to it, start working out, you just realize like it's a definitely a learning gap in a between the high yeah. school and college. Mm -hmm. So just learning that then I was able to play four games before being red shirted. So I was able to get some experience mm -hmm. in games. And I say the best thing about that probably was probably just being able to see all the other guys and just realizing what I was doing wrong in the game. Just as a freshman, that was a big like step that helped me like break out of that shell quick. So next year I could be more productive on the field. Mm -hmm. So I probably have to say, observing and realizing what mistakes I was making. Because when I say fre freshman year, when I got a couple games in, it was more like I was playing not to mess up. Mm -hmm. 
instead of just truly just being on the field, enjoying the game and just playing. And that's mm -hmm. the best way you can play if you just let it be all natural. Of course. And I'm um, looking back to your, at your career thus far with Georgia State. You suffered a torn labrum and missed spring practice in 2020. Uh, what was most difficult to having to sit out? But also, what did you learn uh, most from watching from the sidelines and kind of from a different perspective and viewpoint? So that's the hardest thing is definitely just watching my teammates work without me. So I'm a big team guy. I want to be out there with my team working out. So just being sitting back, just seeing them work, seeing them suffer together, come together as a team, mm -hmm. and just me being sitting out on the sideline just with a brace on, me not be able to get stronger, me not be able to work, just get better with my craft. That was definitely, I felt like it was going to put me back. So just dealing with those thoughts, trying to get my mental right, just during that whole process was just definitely hard. Mm -hmm. And um, when reflecting on this past season, what would you say uh, went well for you, what you approved on most, but also what you might have thought you underperformed and to your liking in general? I feel like my, I say my game IQ compared to when I was playing sophomore and junior was definitely way different because at this point in time, I like I know all the I know the plays. I know my back, of my hands. So me being able to be on the field, getting my technique, play to play like how it's supposed to be, and be able to put my own spin on it because I've had the uh, the experience with the play. I've had experience with playing. So I feel like that definitely is what my big improvement was. Then I say the one thing I feel like I can improve on is the big thing with me is finishing because I left a lot of plays out there. Mm -hmm. So this year, that's why I'm definitely trying to improve finishing, improving my pass rush. So that's the few things I'm trying to work on. Of course. And um, when talking about recruitment and taking your own recruitment into uh, consideration, you know, the NIL deals, just simply what kind of advice can you give the athletes just wanting to take that next step to college and just, kind of what kind of mindset that they can have that can really benefit them the most? Because there's a lot of outside distractions, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I definitely understand. But for high school to come into college, when they seen these NIA deals, they, college is dangling in front of them. To me, all I can say is that do your re research, go into research without having an NIA deal in your head. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for your family because high school players, kids all have different situations so mm -hmm. i can't say one person taking that school because of the nil deal was a bad decision because you never know what they have going on at home so it's like mm -hmm. make sure you do your research make sure you pray about it make sure you can really understand make sure the school is right for you and best for your family of course and i'm transitioning over to life off the field what does a typical day look like for you during the season and uh the off season like right now yes so during the season I'm pretty much up and I'll be around and roll about five classes. So with COVID and all this new uh, e-learning and stuff like that, most of my classes will be on like on the computer. So my day goes by working out, practice in the morning. Then I go to study hall later. Then I either log in, do work for my class and just deal with that. But off season, off season is a little different. It's purely just working out and I have a job at Florida the course. So I pick up shifts and go in. So that's pretty much one of the days is, but, and also I have a dog. So yeah, I have a dog too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, well, that's, a that's always, <laughs> yeah, off season, in season. <laughs> dog yeah, no, always there. It's always a big priority, but uh, mm -hmm. additionally, talk to uh, talk to us about your major. What's it about? Classes you've been taking for it, but more importantly, why you chose it. So the major I'm in is interdisciplinary studies. I wouldn't say it was my first major, but going like getting into college, like you never know what your major going to be. At first, I was in an econ major, took classes for it. It just wasn't my thing. So I went and did interdisciplinary studies because it's a broad category for uh, a major. So yeah. I can do a lot of things with it. And like me personally, I'm a person and like I like to help people. And with this degree, I can go into teaching. I can go into many different aspects with the uh, degree. I'm a special education major. So, yeah, so yeah. teaching is something for me. But um, looking into an article written by Stan Autry, you're quoted. I've always tried to lead by example, but I've been more outspoken. I've got to step it up, step up in that leadership role. And I've gotten stronger and I've tried to improve my mental aspect of the game, too. 
Uh, reflecting back on this, has this always been your mentality since you were younger? But regardless of your answer, what has Georgia State taught you the most so far during your time with the program? Gotcha. But no, that's definitely been, been my mentality for a while. I've always been, I'm not a big, was never a big outspoken person, but you always know I was going to do my job. I was going to do it right. I was one ain't going to cause no problems. I just, mm-hmm. that's how I try to show, I try to lead by example. Like, you can, you feel me, just keep your head down, work, and just trust the process. So that's something I always done did in my life. And the biggest, the biggest thing George Day has taught me is to, let see what the biggest thing George Day has taught me. Perseverance, because perseverance is definitely something George Day has taught me because being like being at Georgia State, my first couple of years, I had to play under a couple of people. So me, me with that mentality I have, keep my head down, keep working, and wait for my time. So persevering, just waiting on stuff to happen and waiting to get my chance and be able to play and show what I have. Then just even I can even say that for a Georgia State team. You take some lose, you take some losses, but you have to be able to persevere as a team. So mm-hmm. that's been a big thing I've learned from Georgia State. Of course, and I'm looking more into Georgia State and their program while on the topic. Uh, what do you feel they pride themselves most on uh, as a whole? Mm-hmm. Pride themselves most on. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, give me a little sick to think. It's all good. It's all good. I think the thing what we pride ourselves most on is getting better every day. Because for a program that's only been in existence around 13, 14 years, every day is a day to get better and always be improving from what we've done last season. So, like, every year I've been here, Georgia State has taken a, a big step and just in the uh, career of uh, Georgia State football. So, mm-hmm. like, this year we, we had the most wins in school history, two back-to-back bowl wins. So, it's just Georgia State is definitely just – get better every day, improve every day. Of course. And I'm um, looking the next season. What can fans expect not only from yourself, but the team going forward? So fans, they can expect I'm going to show out. I'm putting the show out this year. I'm trying to have the best season I'd have had. So for me, just always been a watch. I'm making plays. That's that's my big thing this year. And for Georgia State, we're going to surprise some folks with the schedule we got. So I just, that's all I can say. We're going to surprise Yeah. Them. Do you have a particular game circled on the calendar this upcoming season that you're most looking forward to? I say three biggest games. I say I got three big games. Them first two, just because the South Carolina notoriety about them, SEC, they got a – I can't think of the quarterback's name right now. Um, uh, Spencer Rattler, I think. Spencer Rattler, big name. He's supposed to be coming in the program, change stuff. So that game, North Carolina, because we got to get payback for what happened last year. And definitely App State. That's that's been a that's been a win we've been needing. Of course. And um, for everyone in life, they always have a special someone, group of people that mean a lot to them in their life. Uh, their biggest supporters in life. For you, who is that person or group of people? And if they were to be listening, uh, what would you have to share with them? I'll say my look, my group has always been kept my head kept my head straight, helped me with my mental. Definitely my grandfather, grandmother, and my mother. Because my mother was the one always there for me, always getting me to practices. Nobody else could. I played three sports. She always she worked the job sometimes too. She always made sure I got what I needed, got where I needed to be. Grandfather was the reason really why I played this sport. He was my coach when I was younger. It was at a point when I was a kid where I didn't want to play football anymore. And I remember this conversation like it was yesterday. He said, I told him, I was like, I don't want to go to practice today. I don't, I don't want to play no, this year. He was like, I'm still, I'm gonna still come to the house. He was like, if you want to play, have your pads ready. If you don't, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I remember having my pads ready. It was something that happened in that time frame where I made my mind of my grandfather <laughs> able to give me the choice instead of being pushed to do it, something like that. Then my grandmother, this my prayer, my prayer warrior right there. She she always gonna send me pray, uh, prayers. She pray over me, sends me scriptures. And when I was young, we, she used to stay with us. So we all every time in the morning we uh, did the prayer at your best. So the one thing I can say to those three is just 
I appreciate everything y'all done for me. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those three. Mm -hmm. so and, um, yeah, of course. And um, when your collegiate career eventually comes to an end, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind at Georgia State, both on and off the field, but also how you want others to most remember you for your time and your dedication to the program as a whole? So when I leave Georgia State, the legacy I want to leave is definitely one uh, that he was an outstanding person, not just a football player, not just uh, just – I just want be people to see me be like, on football, he was a great player. He was a he was a great friend, a great person I could talk to. I just, you feel me? I just don't want to be only football. I want to yeah. be able to look at, like, he did his job. He led. He always, uh, how can I say it? Led by example? Yeah. And just, he was a good man instead of just a good athlete. Of course. That's true. Of course. And our last question, what might be next for you, for your future as an athlete and individual after college? Are you more so taking it day by day until that time presents itself? So right now, it's, I definitely have sights on the NFL. That's, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm preparing for it, but depending on how this season go and next season go, you never know. I might have to stay another year. I might mm -hmm. not. So really, it's just all about this season so i'm taking it day by day but i'm always preparing for that opportunity because right now i'm preparing just to be the best i can be overall mentally physically and athletically so so whatever happens whatever happens taking day by day the chance arises i'll take of course uh once again thomas gore georgia state defense lineman thomas really appreciate you taking the time sitting down for an interview and uh wish you nothing but the best of your future man Thanks, man. Of course.